Thank you very much and good morning. I have the pleasure and honor of having been invited to speak with you today and bringing you with a presentation on current challenges and emerging technology in firearm and tool mark identification. Again, my name is Ron Nichols and I am a firearm and tool mark examiner with at this point over 30 years of experience in the discipline. I've worked as a firearm examiner for two different law enforcement agencies, having retired from the United States Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives in 2017. At that point, I established Nichols Forensic Science Consulting through which I provide training and consultation in firearm and tool mark identification and associated issues. As was mentioned, I've also published numerous articles in various forensic science journals, and I've published two books and a contributing author and several others. This morning, there are gonna be two primary objectives to my presentation. The first is to discuss current challenges in the discipline of firearm and tool mark identification. The second is to discuss some emerging technologies because in many ways they will assist in assuaging many of the current concerns of critics of those in the discipline. The United States tends to be a very litigious society. Furthermore, because of the errors that have been made in criminal cases involving forensic science, there has been increased skepticism of the various forensic science disciplines, especially those that have been considered pattern matching disciplines, such as fingerprint comparison and identification, shoe and tire print comparison and identification, and the reason why I'm here today, firearm and tool mark identification. There have been concerns expressed generally by, outs by those outside the realm of forensic science, that the discipline of firearm and tool mark identification is not reliable. Some of those concerns and accusations have come from the defense community, while others have been expressed by academicians, generally attorneys or statisticians. Other concerns have seen print in various publications. To be upfront, I could discuss for hours and even multiple days on the topic of challenges in firearm and tool mark identification. I have given workshops on the topic and have provided many webinars as well. However, I only have 30 minutes with you today. So I'm gonna focus on three primary challenges that critics believe to be true of the firearm and tool mark discipline within forensic science. The first is the uniqueness of marks. This challenge was certainly not first raised by the National Research Council, but was the first time a group of scientists, albeit not forensic scientists, but scientists nonetheless, declared, and I quote, the fundamental assumptions of the uniqueness and reproducibility of firearms related to marks has not yet been fully demonstrated. The second has to do with subjectivity. When a different panel of scientists, with some forensic scientists but no trained firearm and tool mark examiner, believe that a fundamental problem of firearm and tool mark identification was the lack of a defined process. In other words, one of the primary concerns was the subjectivity involved in a final decision-making process of the examiner. There was no standard quantitative measure by which examiners were held when comparing tool marks of unknown origin. The third and final one is that expressed by the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, hereafter referred to as PCAST. They arbitrarily defined what constitutes sufficient validation for a forensic science discipline, as well as what constitutes adequate study design for testing validity. Based on their review, only one such study existed at the time of the publication of the report. And since they decided two were needed, 
they stated that the firearm and tool mark identification discipline fell short of scientific validity. I want to discuss these challenges one by one. The first being the uniqueness of marks. Before the development of the AFTI theory of identification in 1990, and AFTI is the Association of Firearm and Toolmark Examiners, there were many studies published that examined toolmark generation and whether the same tool would produce similar tool marks and different tools would produce different tool marks. The earliest work was performed by Baldhazard in Europe and Goddard in the United States. Each believed to establish the concept of individuality, and indeed, Goddard believed uniqueness to be axiomatic when he declared, quote, no two things, either of man's or God's creation, are ever exactly alike. After Baldhazard and Goddard and before 1990, there were approximately 11 articles published dealing with firearm parts, most of which were consecutively manufactured, and seven dealing with tool marks, and those are on the screen before you. In this research, the authors generally obtained tools, again, many of them consecutively manufactured, and produced a series of test marks comparing marks made by the same tool to determine the level of similarity, and then comparing marks made by different tools to see if they could be differentiated. In general, these authors found that one, marks made by the same tool could generally be identified as having been made by the same tool, and two, marks made by different tools demonstrated sufficient differences that a false identification would not be made. However, because of the way the studies were conducted, it could be argued that there was circular logic taking place, maybe not to the extreme that is depicted in the chart, but circular nonetheless. And this is a main criticism of the early work that was performed and which served in part as the basis for the AFTI theory of identification. Let's look at the graphic. On the left, we begin in the upper left with bullets fired from the same gun. We compare such bullets and observe similarities. Therefore, they are similar. And because they are similar, they must be bullets fired from the same gun. Moving to the graphic on the right side, we have bullets fired from different guns. And when compared, differences are observed. Therefore, they are different. And because they are different, they must be bullets fired from different guns. Let's consider this for a moment. The only way that it could be determined whether two tool marks were similar or different was for a human examiner to compare them. When comparing tool marks made by the same tool, they no doubt observed similarities as well as differences. Because we know as firearm and tool mark examiners that even replicate marks made by the same tool will have some differences. And when comparing tool marks made by different tools, they no doubt observe differences and maybe even some similarities. They reported as such. However, what was the criteria they used to declare tool marks from consecutively manufactured tools could be differentiated? Generally, whether bullets, cartridge cases, or other tools, what was generally concluded was they are different, therefore the method is valid. Maybe it was, but was a criteria by which they were declared them by which they were declared to be different valid with a couple of exceptions the criteria was never defined and without a defined criteria we can easily enter into a circular argument an example of this can be found in Biasotti's publication in 1959 
dealing with consecutive matching striations or CMS. In that article, he defined when striations would match saying, and I quote, lines match when bullets are in phase, when the angle lies between the long axis of the bullet and the angle of twist, and when the lines appear similar in contour and of common origin. So as we can see, part of the criteria for determining that matching lines have the same origin is when they appear to be of common origin. This is a clear example of circular reasoning. Only in two of the studies was there an effort to quantify the similarities that are being observed. These are enclosed in the red boxes. Burden Kirk was the first in 1942 with tool marks and percent matching lines. Bia Sodi was the second in 1959 with bullets and consecutive matching striations. These individuals strive to determine a demonstrable, quanti quantifiable difference between tool marks made by the same tool and tool marks made by different tools. However, we tend to set those articles aside because percent matching lines is not used and consecutive matching striations, well, at least in the United States, that is not widely accepted. None of the other studies had any measurable or quantifiable data that could be independently assessed by other researchers. Furthermore, the results of the studies were based on subjective assessments of the authors. Since these studies, there have been many more studies on consecutively made tools by various researchers. The bulk of them address the question in much the same way, though. And while there is nothing inherently wrong about this approach, in my opinion, it's not the best approach we can use. Since the advent of the 21st century, numerous studies have been published that I will refer to as machine-based studies. These studies will collect toolmark topographies generated by different tools and then compare the, those topographies using algorithms that were developed for that purpose. In short, these studies were producing objective, quantifiable data to address the primary premise of firearm and toolmark identification. That is that the same tool will produce similar tool marks under similar conditions and different tools will produce different tool marks. In general, the published work can be divided into five primary groups as listed on the slide. Among these five groups are over 30 studies, many of which have hundreds of thousands of comparisons that have been performed between same source and different source tool marks. I'm not gonna go into detail on any of these studies that have been published because there simply isn't enough time. I do have resources at the end of the lecture though that can be accessed for such information. So in summary, what has been found is that machine-based studies provide the clearest, objective, quantifiable data that different tools produce different tool marks. Therefore, these studies support the theory of uniqueness of marks. There are over 30 studies that have been published dealing with bullets, cartridge cases, and tool marks produced by other tools, and they all show significant, statistically significant separation between data from same source and data from different source comparisons. Among all these studies have been over 2 million 
unique data points that have been collected and analyzed. The machine-based studies allow for comparisons of a larger number of tools under same source and different source conditions than could ever be performed by human examiners. For example, one study that was discussed that is in this list involved more than 106,000 known same source and known different source comparisons of tool marks. Another involved nearly 112,000 comparisons of different cartridge cases in known same source and known different source conditions. It is important to note that as technology developed, there were growing pains with respect to data collection and processing that existed resulting in various means by which to handle the work. At the same time, the common theme through the studies was that while there may not be clear separation of same source and different source data, at least for the tools that were studied, tool surfaces are sufficiently different that they will produce different tool marks such that reliable common source determinations should be possible. Well, since we've established through these machine-based studies, the uniqueness of marks, the question to address now is the reliability of trained examiners to make accurate common source determinations. It is clear based on over 2 million objective data points that there are statistically significant differences between same source and different source tool marks. However, this is the question to answer now. Are those differences discernible by human examiners using standard laboratory methods and procedures? And again, those procedures involve the subjective determination of whether these tool marks were made by these tools or a different tool. The answer is yes. This is the first of many slides summarizing error rate studies that have been conducted by various researchers. As you can see on this slide for bullets, there are many with false identification rates of 0%. And every study has an error rate less than 1%, except for the study of Knapp and Garvin who reported a test-taking bias, which appears to account for the inflated error rate. This is a second slide dealing with error rate studies involving bullets. And again, the false positive error rates on this slide are less than 1%. Fourteen validation tests or error rate studies have focused on cartridge cases, nine of which are represented here and are rest on the next slide. The Lyon study was based on extractor marks only, and it appears that there was a test-taking bias in that one as well. The Mayland and Tucker study was done solely on chamber marks. The Baldwin study is the one study cited by PCAST, and I mentioned that earlier at the time the report was published as the only properly done validation study for the discipline. This slide represents the rest of the error rate studies involving cartridge cases. And I want to discuss several here. The Duez and Lillian studies used virtual comparison microscopy using top match 3D technology by Cadre, as did the portion of the Knowles and Hockey study dealing with virtual comparison microscopy. The studies done by Kiesler and Bajik followed the design of the Baldwin study, which was accepted by PCAST as a valid study showing scientific validity, but they were published after the PCAST report was published. 
Furthermore, the Bijik study also included bullets which were presented previously. Therefore, given the study designs, the combination of these three studies would meet the arbitrary PCAS requirements for scientific validity. And as you can see, the false, identific false identification error rates in these error rate studies are very low. Finally, there were four studies published that dealt with non-firearm tool marks, and those studies are summarized here. So two of the primary concerns of the firearm and tool mark discipline are the uniqueness of marks, which machine-based studies have demonstrated that that premise is true. And then over 30 error rate studies have been performed that demonstrate that examiners can reliably discern differences and similarities in tool marks and make accurate common source determinations, despite the subjectivity involved in making those determinations. In summary, there have been over 30 error rate studies summarized here. These studies have dealt with bullets, cartridge cases, and non-firearm tool marks, many of which were generated using consecutively made tools. The error rates in these studies were generally between zero and 1%, though there were some that were higher, but that was only in five of the reports. And one of those had a clear test-taking bias. But if one wanted to incorporate the reasonable range, it would be zero to 2%, with a great majority of studies showing 1% or less. It must be remembered, though, that these studies do not establish a discipline-wide error rate. The errors in these studies represent failures of the criterion of identification for the individual examiner making the error. Furthermore, in these studies, it was found that most of the failures within a single study could be attributed to the same individuals. That is, a single individual was responsible for more than one error, some making three or more. So in summary, we've looked at two challenges so far. The first was that tool marks are not unique and it was demonstrated through the machine-based studies that tool marks made by different tools will be different. And now with these error rate studies, we've demonstrated that trained examiners can reliably discern these differences and render accurate common source determinations. So we've put two of the primary challenges to rest. That leaves a third, subjectivity. Now, there are two primary issues associated with subjectivity. The first is that what is standardized and quantitative criteria, common source determ without one, uh, common source determinations are not reliable. The first argument that has been commonly used to refute this concern has that been of other areas of science and medicines do not have such a requirement. However, there is a stronger, more obvious argument. If subjectivity was an issue such that the range of subjectivity exhibited by examiners discipline-wide was so large, then that would be reflected in larger error rates in the error rate studies. But that's not the case. As just seen, the error rates are generally between 0 and 1%, arguably up to 2%. That demonstrates that even though the final opinion by an examiner is subjective, the range of subjectivity among examiners is narrow and does not represent an obstacle to reliability. The second is that an examiner cannot establish a likelihood or probability of a false match. The Association of Firearm and Toolmark Examiners Theory of Identification addresses this as a remote likelihood. While the European Network of Forensic Science Institutes uses a Bayesian scale of reference, ranging from no support to extremely strong support for a same source conclusion relative to a different source conclusion. While both have been used historically, there is no number that is quantitatively measured and generated for either scale. So this is the perfect segue 
into emerging technology, because that is what the emerging technology hopes to accomplish. Providing a likelihood ratio of false match probability for the comparisons performed. This can provide to the court a reliable estimate of the uncertainty with respect to the source of a tool mark. The first is a quantum 3D microscope developed by Ultra Electronics Forensic Technology. Currently available for bullets, along with the size of tablets and chamber marks on cartridge cases, the quantum 3D microscope is based on the bullet tracks technology used in IBIS. The resulting REBEL method generates a graph showing the demonstrable, quantifiable differences between matching or same source and non-matching or different source comparisons. The graph on the slide represents the test fires from the Brundage set in black circles superimposed over the database of 406 bullets. This set includes 10 pairs of bullets fired from 10 consecutively rifled barrels and 15 unknown bullets that were compared using the system. The different source comparisons within the Brundage set all fall within a gray cloud of different source data, while same source comparisons are clearly separated from the non-matching conditions. Furthermore, each of the comparisons represented by the black dots in the upper white quadrant of that graph have a false match rate index, representing the probability of a different source being responsible for the compared and matched bullet. Now this technology is currently available for bullets and a prototype is available for cartridge cases, which is based on a brass track system. The second is the system produced by Cadre. This system uses a gel to capture the features on the head of a cartridge case to include breech face marks, shears, and firing pin impressions. The features are collected using photometric stereo and then compared. The advantages to the system include the marking of images for quality review and control, and they are in the process of developing a quantitative assessment for likelihood ratios based on a compared marks. In addition to the cartridge case unit, they're also working on a solution for bullets using the same gel site technology. And finally, I want to briefly discuss EvoFinder, which is in use in Europe and among other locations. This uses a single unit to acquire both bullet and cartridge case images. One tool provides for a ballistic database, which is one of the primary uses, but can also generate quantitative data based on its existing database. Before I close, I do want to mention a few resources that are available. The first is the Firearm and Toolmark Examiner Training Academy, through which I provide remote training in the scientific foundations of the discipline and comparative pattern examinations of bullets and cartridge cases, trainees, and new examiners. The second is advanced training for firearm and toolmark examiners, where I have online on-demand webinars dealing with such topics as machine-based studies, air rate studies, bias, and other webinars dealing with the scientific foundations of the discipline. And finally, a third resource is the book I authored, which goes into extensive detail regarding the scientific validity and reliability of the firearm and tool mark identification discipline. Finally, if you have any questions, this is how you can reach me. I wanna thank you for your attention during my presentation, and it has been a pleasure and honor to be with you. Thank you very much.